In this video, I'm going to be breaking down a very concerning situation unfolding in the Deep South on Thursday. The Storm Prediction Center has already put out an enhanced outlook for severe weather, and some of the models look downright menacing. We're also going to take a look at the short and medium range forecast for the rest of the country as our wild weather pattern just keeps on keeping on all the way through the beginning of April. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. For the next three days, all we're going to be talking about pretty much is severe weather. We have a real threat today, tomorrow, and a very significant threat on Thursday. Now is the time to prepare. I can't tell you enough about how important it is to have a NOAA weather radio. This is the best thing you can get to keep you alerted and keep you up to date on severe weather warnings, okay? I've got a link in the top of my description. Please consider it, and I'm sure there'll be a bunch of people in the comments talking about why it's a good decision to get one of these radios. Now, let's start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America, and you can see our big storm so clearly right now. You see the rotation from the panhandle of Oklahoma there, spinning around all the way up into Omaha and as far north as Minneapolis before it spirals down into Memphis, Jackson, Mississippi, Houston, and New Orleans, and actually that's where the most of the action's happening right now. As I'm filming this right now, a tornado warning just popped up down here in Louisiana, just north and west of Lafayette. So that just shows you, even though there's only a marginal risk for severe weather today, these storms are going to be packing a punch. And these storms are going to continue off to the north and east, and they're going to move into the Jackson area, Brookhaven area, the Macomb areas, and Mississippi around the time this video goes up, okay? Now, we do have a line of rain and showers and storms that goes all the way up into St. Louis here, but between Louisiana and St. Louis, it's not expected to be much. And then later on today, we might see some severe weather up here in northeastern Missouri and western Illinois. We can take a better look at that on the weather models. All right, now we're looking at the NAM 3 kilometer model. Okay, as always, if you want to keep up with the time and the date, right there it is above my head. Now let's get right into it. First of all, around the time this video goes up, this is what the radar should look like. Uh, we got some snow breaking out here in central Nebraska. That's going to move up northeast into uh, southeastern South Dakota as we go later on into today. And then you can see our big spiral of precipitation that goes all the way down here uh, into to the Gulf of Mexico and right here in Louisiana, Mississippi, that's where those storms are going to be, okay? Now, the Storm Prediction Center just has a marginal risk for severe weather today, but there is that 2% chance uh, for tornadoes. And as we can see, literally on the radar there, radar indicated tornadoes are already being spotted. So I would watch this area closely today as some of these storms could get strong with damaging hail and winds and the isolated tornado or two. But like I was saying yesterday, I really do think one of the greatest threats down here today is going to be flash flooding. Uh, a lot of these storms are going to be running over the same areas over and over. Over again. So if you live in a flood prone area in Louisiana or Southern Mississippi, please be weather aware today because those creeks and streams are going to rise fast. Now focusing up north a little bit here, watch Northeastern Missouri as we go later on into the day. Okay. Here we are at 3 PM, 4 PM, 5 PM. This is about 4 PM central. Okay. And we've got a line of storms forming here along a little boundary that's underneath this low pressure system. You can see it's really cranking in some colder and drier air underneath it. And you can see all this warm moist air out in front of it. And there is a little boundary here and it's a cold core setup. Okay. Okay, so there's lots of cold air aloft. These kinds of storms have the tendency to overperform, okay? Once again, there's just a marginal risk of severe weather with a 2% chance of tornadoes. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a tornado warning or two today up here in northern Missouri, uh, extreme southern Iowa and western Illinois, right in that area right there, north of St. Louis, south of Des Moines. Uh, once again, be weather aware today. It's not going to be a huge outbreak. It's not going to be, a, you know, anything crazy, but it's just, it's something to watch. And then look, all the way out at 5 p.m. today, we're still seeing extreme extremely heavy rain and severe thunderstorms possibly down here in Louisiana and Mississippi. Once again, the flash flood threat is off the charts down there. Watch it closely. Now, as I push this further out into the future, watch that little spiral of a squall line of storms move into western Illinois now. Once we get into uh, 11, 12 o'clock tonight, these are going to weaken pretty quickly uh, because we're going to lose the energy from the heating of the day. Uh, but we still have that heavy rain down here in Mississippi, and now it's working into Alabama. And we have some scattered showers and storms moving all the way through Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, northern Mississippi, northern Alabama. Nothing really significant about those. And now we can switch our focus from over here to over here. Guys, this over here is the beginning stages of our very concerning storm that I keep talking about. This storm is no joke, guys. I hate to be the hype guy. I don't want to be the, you know, the person that hypes up the weather. <laughs> but like seriously, some of the, the model outputs for what I'm seeing here is some of the most concerning stuff I've seen in a long time. And we just had a high risk outbreak uh, literally the other day. So it's still not time to freak out. <laughs> it's just time to get prepared, especially if you live in the deep south down here. I would go ahead and start making your preparations now. Make sure you have those severe weather plans in place because it's about to get serious. Check it out. The North American model says that we're going to have a pretty intense storm spark up here around New Mexico and Colorado. It's going to bring some heavy snow uh, to uh, New Mexico and Arizona, maybe even 
southeastern parts of Utah before it really starts spinning up some precipitation in Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas there. And thanks to this storm out in front of it that we're dealing with right now, we've got a deep trough coming through here and this is just gonna dig it even deeper and it's going to eject to the north and east and it's gonna go pretty quickly too. And with that, it's gonna bring a wide open warm sector and some strong lower level jet stream winds here, okay? And uh, you know, the warm sector looks really similar to the high risk outbreak that we saw the other day in Alabama. Uh, the thing that looks more impressive to me, and yes, this storm looks more impressive than the storm we had last week, is the lower level jet stream. And I'll talk more about that here in a second. As you can see, those storms really start to spark up Wednesday night into Thursday there. And we do have a slight risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center for that. But once we get into day three here, okay, 7 a.m., 8 a.m., 9 a.m., 10 a.m. on Thursday, our focus is gonna be shifted over here into the deep south. Once again, we've got our low pressure system, a warm front, a cold front, and once again a wide open warm sector here where anything can happen this is where it starts looking really concerning let's zoom in first of all dew points are going to be in the 70s and upper 60s for much of mississippi alabama uh, western tennessee louisiana eastern arkansas uh, this is actually a larger warm sector than what we had with our storm the other day that brought over 50 tornado reports to alabama this looks really similar to that just bigger and a little bit further west additionally here's our surface cape and if you're new here that's convective energy it's the fuel that storms need to form and we're right around two to 3,000 joules per kilogram over the entire state of Mississippi around 2 p.m. on March 25th. And you got to remember, this is as far out as the model goes. This is actually expected to increase as the day goes on. So we could be talking about Cape levels 3,000, 3,500 over here, which once again is more significant than what we saw the other day. Now here's the kicker, okay? This is the lower level jet stream, the 850 millibar wind speeds. With our last storm that sparked all those tornadoes in Alabama, we had a very similar setup with the dew points and the thermodynamics, but the, the jet stream was only ramping up about 40 knots at the peak of the storms. Now it did eventually kick up, but it was after the majority of the storms had already went through. Now this is showing me that this jet stream is going to amplify up near 60 or 70 knots while the storms are forming, which is just the perfect mixture for a, a significant severe weather outbreak here in the deep south. Something else I wanna show you, which was pretty important in the last outbreak, uh, is the significant tornado parameter. Once again, if you've never seen this before, this is a composite model that kinda takes a look at all the elements of the atmosphere and gives us a rating on a scale from zero to 10 on how likely it is for a significant tornado to form in a given area. Now, let's push this all the way forward to 2 p.m. and look at that, it's literally maxed out through much of southern Mississippi here. Uh, once again, this also looks significantly worse than what our last storm did uh, the other day in Alabama. And remember, this stops at 2 p.m. 3 p.m. it could be up here, 4 p.m. it could be up here. This is gonna go to the northeast and it's gonna go pretty quick because that trough ejection and that low pressure system is just gonna be screaming north and east towards the Great Lakes. Uh, during this time. So we got to watch this closely, guys. I don't want to sound the alarm just yet. I don't want to pull the trigger on, on the words tornado outbreak until the Storm Prediction Center does. But I'm telling you guys, if it even looks close to this tomorrow, uh, you're going to hear about this everywhere. I don't know why more mainstream meteorologists aren't talking about it right now, but this is likely going to be a very serious situation. And I just hope that as many people as possible are getting ready for it. And if you live in this area, or if you're just interested in what's going on here, make sure you tune in for tomorrow's video because tomorrow we're going to have so much more information available to us to where I can really break things down a little bit more. And we can also talk about the updated, uh, you know, parameters here for the severe weather. So make sure you tune in tomorrow. Now let's talk about the rest of the forecast. All right. Now we're looking at the Euro model and we're looking at the whole United States because we got more people that watch these videos than just down here, guys. The reason um, I focus so much down here during situations like this is because really there's not a lot going going on anywhere else, right? And we could be facing a very serious situation down here. So I want to make sure that I spend as much time as possible talking about this uh, so these people are informed, okay? Starting around Thursday, we're going to have some snow back here in the Rocky Mountains in the Pacific Northwest, especially in the higher elevations in Nevada and in the uh, California Mountains. We're expecting a pretty decent amount of snow as uh, a little disturbance is coming in with our Pacific jet stream. And this over here is going to fuel another storm for us on the East Coast eventually. But here's our big severe weather maker. You 
you can see it here on the Euro pretty well. It's a strong 982 millibar low pressure system. It actually looks really bad on the Euro too. Let me just show you the jet stream. So yeah, look at this. The Euro actually shows a more intense jet stream uh, with this storm than the NAM does. And it brings the severe weather threat a little bit further north into uh, Kentucky, maybe even as far north as Southern Illinois and Southern Indiana. Here's your instantaneous flash rate. It shows those storms going through Tennessee, Western Kentucky, and eventually maybe all the way up into Michigan uh, before eventually dying out. Wow, that's impressive. And once again, this shows an, a more intense jet stream than the NAM does. And, that, and that's what I was just freaking out about on the NAM. So, phew. It's wild out there, guys. I don't know what else to say. Let's keep pushing this forward, though. This is going to bring some heavy rain to the northeast as well. Um, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. You guys are going to see some uh, rain out of this. In northern Maine, you might see a little bit of snow as that low pressure system tries to bring down some cold air from Canada. But I think most of the snow is going to stay in Quebec there. And then we're going to be talking about another storm coming down. We talked about this yesterday, and it's still showing it. Uh, I'm actually really surprised that it. You know, we're getting two days in a row where we're getting some consistent model runs showing another Arctic blast moving into the Midwest, the Northern Midwest, and then eventually the Great Lakes region, and then the Northeast. And, and once again, Arctic blast doesn't mean a lot in the spring, but it is going to be significantly colder than what it has been if this moves in with our little clipper that could possibly bring some significant snow there to the northeast. Look at this. We've got a blizzard. This is a full on March blizzard, March 29th. Um, according to the Euro, two days in a row now, uh, we're showing an actual blizzard here for upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, maybe even as far south as some parts of Massachusetts there as we have a 978 millibar low pressure system just off Cape Cod there uh, bringing extremely heavy snow to Maine uh, and as you can see those isobars are really close together meaning that we're going to have also some very gusty winds that could bring low temperatures in the 20s for much of us here in the Great Lakes and interior northeast but yeah that's kind of crazy to watch and look it just kind of sits there wow look at that Watch it dance, son. Watch it dance. The odds of this actually happening are low, but they're higher today than they were yesterday because we're seeing two model runs show it now. Uh, once we get within 100 hours of this storm, if it's still showing something similar, we'll watch it a little bit closer. But right now, I'm going to say that this is bull hockey, and we shouldn't be paying too much attention to that. But boy, is that fun to look at there uh, for the Northeast. A late March into early April blizzard. And then, of course, we get another storm system working through Wednesday, March 31st that could bring some severe weather to uh, Arkansas, Missouri, Western Kentucky, Southern Illinois there, and some snow to Wisconsin, uh, eventually into uh, Ontario and Quebec there with some more heavy rain down here in the southeast. Just for fun, let's take a look at how much snow the uh, the Euro's putting out here for the northeast. How would you like to see 36 inches of snow up here in northern Maine? 30 inches of snow in northern Vermont and New Hampshire, upstate New York getting close to 30 inches of snow, and maybe over here in the hills of Massachusetts getting 10, 11, 15 inches of snow? Wow, that is actually actually crazy to see um, in late March. You know, I mean, it's definitely happened before. It's not unprecedented or anything, uh, but it would be, it would be pretty interesting to see this play out. So I'm interested to see, do we have anybody that lives up here that watches these videos? And if you do, do you want to see this or do you want nothing to do with it? All right, guys, that's all the weather talk I have for you today. Now, tomorrow's video will probably be solely about the deep South uh, severe weather outbreak that we're likely going to see. So once again, I hope you're here for that. I hope you tune in for that. And then obviously, of course, on Thursday, if we have a moderate risk or higher, and it looks like this is going to be a serious situation, I am going to go live for the duration of the event. And this looks like it could possibly be another 10, 11, 12 hour live stream. So uh, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss any of that. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.